Good day, this is Chief for Chief Tells Tales. I'm retired, hence I'm wearing just a normal shirt, no hat. Uh, beginning of July, I took a little bit of vacation and just decided to take the rest of the month off. And then August rolled around and second week or second Friday, I decided, well, I'm going to get back in the videos again. Um, and I'm going to start talking about just subjects. <laughs> Boris in the background. Uh, subjects in particular, and today I'm going to talk about camouflage net systems and their pull bags. I related the story about the soldier that I took from Alpha Company while I was still in the S3 shop. Took him to the field and taught him how to put up camouflage netting because he says, we don't do that in my company. I said, well, we're expected to do it here because we're generally with brigade and or divisional headquarters and all vehicles will be camouflage. And if I probably sit in the front seat of a Humvee and look to my right, I might see that individual sitting there smiling at me and thanking me. One of the few times I was ever thanked by a soldier for actually teaching them something. Uh, as I said in my regular, or in the regular video, he was a casualty of the Gulf War KIA. So leaving that sad note, uh, we'll start talking about camouflage systems themselves. So you get a camouflage bag, uh, doesn't weigh all that much by itself, and then a set of pole bags. And in your camouflage set, you get a hexagon and a diamond. Now, uh, think about four diamonds would probably equal a hex. I could be a little bit off, but diamonds it would make a long or a weird wide shape as you can tell because diamond with diamond you'd have to do the it's like a sawtooth so to speak a hex as you can see covers uh, covers quite a bit of an area the hex by itself would cover the Humvee that I normally drove in the s3 shop and had to set that up each and every time by myself your pole bag came with 12 poles, I do believe, and I think up to six spreaders. Now, the spreaders are just, a, makes a triangle. Three arms on this thing that you would put on the end of the pole, and that would lift the uh, camouflage netting off your vehicle. And you could rough it up so you're not like a dome shape or anything. You can make yourself try to look like a bush, I've seen some photos of some of the places I've been, an overhead shot of divisional and brigade talks and one big huge bush, but you got this big bush with all these antennas coming out of it because just about every F section and of course the general's got his particular radio and everything else or the brigade commander. So a lot of antennas sticking out of this big bush. Uh, so I got tasked one day by my two sergeant first classes, my two platoon sergeants. I had two platoon sergeants uh, while I was at Fort Stewart. And they said, we want you to build the circus tent. Now, a lot of you have already figured out what I'm going to build. I'm going to build a, a tent or a camouflage net that's going to cover... Uh, we had four expando vans. We had two or three, th two generators. So I had to make a netting system out of hexes and diamonds. But it'd mostly be hexes because hexes fit into one another. And I made it. I want to say five or six in the middle and then of course as you got out towards the edge less and less and less and then you use <coughs> excuse me and then you use diamonds to give it a round shape so to speak on the outside of the hexes so it was all hexes and use the diamonds to make it semi-circular so I decided I'm going to use the troops. I am a squad leader at that time, so I had a squad. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do this smart, and I'm going to do this correct. 
I'm I don't just sit there and, and pass down orders, so to speak. I'm one of those leaders that I will do what my troops have to do for me. And I wanted, like I said, I wanted to do this correctly. So I laid out the initial center, five or six hexes in a row, had help, uh, <coughs> excuse me, had help tying those together because with each of these systems you get two uh, strings or ropes, thin ropes that have all these little hooks, expando hooks, so you can, <clears throat> gosh, I'm dying here, cat again, uh, because the hexes and the diamonds have these holes or these um, square plastic things that have holes in them so you can put two of them together, one from each net and put this pin through it. So you put one pin this way and one pin this way so you just can't pull up, pull on the string and pull them all out at once. Now some people built their nets that way and then sometimes when you get a tear from the wind all your pins will fly out and your camouflage netting will fall apart and probably depending on where it happens with the poles holding it up could easily just start to fall to either side and your whole system will come down. So I built the center section, got it the length that they said that they wanted, like I said, I think it was five or six, I can't remember exactly. And I also drew it on paper. And then, so I built that half, I built on one side of that right away and built it out to where it was complete. So then, rolled that up, except for a few feet in the middle. And then I built the other side, the rest of it, by itself. So, then I had the soldiers come help me. We had a big open field right, right next to our pole barn where we parked all our expando bands. So, so basically the way the uh, vehicles were parked in the pole barn also gave me a guesstimate on how long I needed it to be because our trucks would sit that close in the field but like I said we had two generators but we would put the generators off so we wouldn't be deafened by their noise anybody that's been in the military it's like oh yeah noise and light discipline at the headquarters but you got all these generators like about 10 15 20 generators in the middle of the night yeah real good noise discipline uh, so I had the soldiers help me pull it out and then they ran back all into the pole barn again I said you guys are dismissed for a little bit let me figure out so I went up and down it once twice thrice to make sure that when I called the soldiers back out to sew this back together that they could start at either end, they could start in the middle, work their way toward the edge, or they could all just take a section and tie that together and didn't have to have any worries about coming up short or long on one side or the other. <sighs> so laid it out, like I said, went one, two, three, down the line, called the soldiers back out to come help me. They all got their tying ropes, they all knitted it together. One of my smart ass soldiers dang sergeant this actually worked there's no excess on either end or in the middle or anywhere this really came out fine and I just said thank you and gave him I said of course it did I, my responsibility my building so we rolled it up and now we can roll it up tight enough as to where we could take two of these flat bags as we call them because it rolls into a bag and has ties so you can keep your camouflage net good and tight depending on how tight you packed it you can make it small large bulky but two of those bags wrapping into one another could hold this whole net with the end sticking out because we weren't worried about it we just had to have 
make sure when we got out to the field this big bag we could put up, pull it up get it on top of the vehicles roll it out roll it out both all four directions and then start pulling it up and then staking it down on the edge and like I said we could go high here go low here depending on how you want to do it make you look like a big bush or a big dome and sometimes and then we had to tie ours into the rest of the brigade so we had a little bit of overlap on one end of it but didn't have to worry about that we just let it fall on theirs and didn't have to worry about staking it down because we had to stake down everywhere else good and tight so next exercise we take it out the two FFCs, sergeant first classes they look at me and it says this gonna fit we'll find out won't we I said if not we'll add more to the edge so we rolled it all out got it all staked up they came out and said you did a really good job they, they gave me you know the pat on the back that I needed well you stake it so it goes all the way down to the ground because that's where you will you have to stake it down to the ground now those little guide ropes now if you're on the ground level and you need to go outside the netting you can just open up one of those pull strings or the sewing strings and make yourself a little doorway one of our contractors guess didn't know that's how camouflage netting works now I made sure each and every single one of these sections was good because at the same time they gave me that other mission if you find anything that's deteriorated or torn bring set it aside and we'll get it exchanged for new systems because you know stuff wears out so I did that at the same time too and I think I DX like about three or four sections no diamonds because like I said diamonds were rarely used except on the edges so getting back to all new netting so to speak one of our contractors needed to go outside to look at one of the generators and like I said I'm out there with the two sergeant first classes we're busy talking he walks up to the net looks around doesn't see a doorway we didn't make a doorway whips out his knife and <laughs> through one of my hexes and it wasn't at the edge where we tied them together it was more or less in the middle of this hex hanging down to the ground and he just went right down it the two sergeant first classes and myself we all look at him and the two sergeant first classes look at me and they're like no don't kill him because they saw the look the anger in my eyes I mean, it's not like I was going to attack this guy, but we all started screaming. We're like, what the heck are you doing? You can untie it right there. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Well, I needed to get outside. Oh, I was so hot and so mad. Oh. And our, like I said, brand new net. So there was my first tear in it. I mean, the stupidity of some people. Because a lot of these contractors are former military. They know that camouflage systems are not one huge piece. You make it into one huge piece. So there's my camouflage stories, a little bit of history, like I said. You get two of those, in, or one each in a bag, and you get a bag or a pole bag. And At first we had aluminum poles, but the trouble with aluminum poles is if you uh, some people would use them for other purposes sometimes and then they would chip or ding the end and if you ding the end to the outside of the rim it would not fit so you had to sandpaper file you had to file off like the the uh, shavings as, or I guess that would be the word the indent so you, you get fit inside it. So then we decided that we'd go to fiberglass. Now the trouble with fiberglass is they break. So do the triangle pieces, the spreaders. But Mother Nature helps you break those fiberglass. Once that wind starts going, they get to bending, and all of a sudden they get bending in the middle sometimes, and they start to curve, and that fiberglass just breaks and went through so many systems like that have a cat at my foot 
Let's see Boris. Boris, well, no. come here. You don't want to be in the video? Okay, he doesn't want to be in the video. He's playing with one of his balls. Don't get dirty. So, camouflage systems. Hey, I'll talk about something else next time. This is Chief out. Remember, freedom's not free. You know what to do. And I wish someone would make some sense out of this Russia-Ukraine war. You hear this, you hear that, but I don't see it on the battlefield. Chief out.